I created this journal with a fold-over magnetic closure. I inserted text weight paper because I like to use journals for writing, diary writing. If you want to utilize the same concept for mixed media or art journaling, a heavier weight paper would be more appropriate. My name is Peg and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell of course lets you know when additional content is uploaded and the thumbs up and the comments are truly appreciated. With this journal I started simply by measuring my paper to determine the size of my cover. That's kind of a lazy man's thing for me because I don't like to have to trim paper. So I folded an eight and a half by 11 or an A4 sheet of paper, measured my cover to be about a quarter of an inch larger in both height and width. The spine I created a small spine to cover the number of signatures that I decided to place in it. I want to create a template to use. I'm going to mark this first sheet of paper and then cut a piece of cardstock. I, I just kind of want to get it in my head. So I'm marking it in the center or poking it in the center and punching a hole in the center and a hole one inch from the edge and two inches from the edge on each side. Now I'm pulling out a piece of cardstock and I want to do I want to do the same thing. I want to get that so I can fold that right in half and make that easy to use as a template. And I'm just gonna score it down down the center to make that fold very defined. With a nice folded piece I'm ready to punch the holes and that completes the template. Now it's just a matter of taking the template into each of these signatures. I used three sheets of paper for each signature. I marked the top, punching the holes, making sure that I lay those sheets of papers with the top aligned, that gives me the straight line of punched holes to bind this. And you can see that here. So I'm going to clip those up and set those aside and get started on creating the cover. So the first thing I want to do is lay down some color. I've used a little parchment and added a little burnt umber into that to darken it just a bit. This is a 5 inch sheet by a 5 inch sheet that I will be utilizing to create the repeating pattern. I also want to put some of the same color down on some additional sheets of paper to use for the back cover, some inside pieces perhaps, but I want to have those in stock on hand. With this 5x5 five five, I will fold it in half turn it the opposite way and fold it in half again. That creates this little center square. Then I'm going to begin illustrating in pencil. So I'm drawing my leaf pattern in pencil in the center square. Once I have that pretty filled within the definition of those fold lines, I'm going to flip it, <coughs> excuse me, flip it, fold it, and illustrate across the fold like this. In doing so what that is going to do is give me that repeating pattern. My intent is to scan this in my scanner <clears throat> or on my copy machine and then take the scanned image into I'm going to use just PowerPoint, take it into PowerPoint and lay it side by side to create that repeating pattern on an image. And then once I have that within PowerPoint, I'll be able to print it in one continuous pattern. So we're going across the folds vertically and then we'll fold it horizontally 
and do the same thing. And once I had that all penciled in, I colored it with my gold pen and a black marker. This is what I was talking about when I scanned it in and then cut and pasted it or duplicated it and pasted it side by side. Printed that out on my copy, sh- copy machine, copy, copier. And now I have the pattern for my front cover. I'm just kind of <clears throat> determining how it's going to look. And I can see some of those little white lines in between where I cut and pasted or duplicated and pasted. So I want to eliminate that. And I'm pulling out a transparent uh, paint and a red iron oxide and going to lay this down on the gel plate or my gel press and just go over the top of it and give that just a little depth. I want to start with the construction of the book and I have cut the pieces or the cover and the spine and that fold over with out of that chipboard and I am putting it together with a surgical tape. I find that surgical tape is kind of a cloth tape and it holds really well and it is not bulky, it's thin but sturdy. So I'm utilizing that to piece my book together. So. Here is the spine and the front and back cover, just covering it with the surgical tape. And there's the foundation of the book. Now this piece is going to go on with a piece of cardstock. So we'll set that aside for now. And now I want to cover that front piece. And I decided to piece the book together before I put the cover on because I don't want to use any kind of um, lace or fabric to cover where the sections meet. So I'm just going to fold over the edges and get this put into place with some Yes Paste. And there, I've I've put it down fully with the Yes Paste on the back side and just folding it over. And now we have that cover in place. Just kind of going back and defining some of the areas that look like they needed a little touch up after the iron oxide was put on. And now I want to put that red iron oxide tint over one of these sheets that we created at the beginning to make that in concert with color. So there we have two of those done, and I will utilize one of those for the back cover. And I will be putting that on the exact same way, just covering the cover with the Yes Paste and laying it up to the edge of the spine and then folding it over like a package. So there's the front cover and the back cover covered, if you will. So now let's work on the inside front and the inside back. And I'm just utilizing for those areas that parchment and burnt umber that we covered with iron oxide for the inside front and the inside back. And I've just cut it to fit. There we go.
Just taking a baby wipe and cleaning up any glue that may have leaked out around those edges because I do not want my, my book sticking together. And now I am marking the holes with the template that I used for the paper and will be punching those in the spine. Just making sure I'm keeping them in line. And now that I have them all marked, I will take my craft pick and just go through each. And I have five signatures that I'm going to punch the holes for. And now we are ready to sew those signatures into place. Now to cover these holes or to not have that tape showing on the inside, I've decided to lay a piece of coffee-stained cheesecloth down along that spine, because that's going to give me the capability to see where my holes are, but cover that tape. And I am trimming it off at the edges and not allowing it to peek through the top. I kind of want this book to be a little more defined and not, um, you know, I like the other junky kind of look with things sticking out, but that's not what I'm utilizing this for. So now I'm covering that fold over piece and I'm just wrapping it in that same paper. Going to ink around the outside edge with the black stays on ink. And we're starting to get this book together. Just thinking through how I'm gonna how I'm gonna accomplish this. So now I want to mark where I want my magnet. I've decided I want a magnetic closure, and I'm just gonna draw a circle around the outside edge of that magnet <clears throat> and kind of cut. I mean, I want it to not stick out, so I'm just cutting away some of that chipboard to hopefully lay that magnet flush on the inside there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the outside cover of the book. Now, in reality, and if, if I had thought this through at the beginning, I would have cut this and put that magnet in before I put my cover on. But the fact remains that I did not. So I am cutting that little indention out in my finished cover or my covered cover and gluing that magnet into place. And I am going to cover that up with one of these skeleton leaves 
So I just dapped that. It's dapped a word. Well, it's, it's one now. I dapped that in that red iron oxide. And I wasn't overly satisfied with that, so I have decided to create a backdrop of that leaf with black cardstock. And now I'm gluing it in place. And I am using one just skeleton leaf dipped in the iron oxide. And there we go. And I've just created a trio of leaves there. And that magnet is, is working, so I'm content with that. Now I'm sewing in the signatures, and I'm just using a plain pamphlet type stitch, and I'm sewing that in with black embroidery th floss or embroidery thread. I did not pull out a waxed thread for this book. And I'll just tie that off and do the same thing until we get all five signatures sewn into place. And there we go. The beauty of film editing, all five are now in place. There is what the spine is looking like now. And we will cover that up with some black cardstock. And we're going to create a pattern of like a pinstripe pattern with scoring. So I'm scoring about a quarter of an inch apart and I am just completing this one sheet of cardstock and I will cut the area that I need to cover the spine. And now I'm folding it. The, I've measured the width of the spine and have about a half inch on either side and I just am folding along that score line and really defining that and now I have that piece just to lay in place over the edge of the book. I'm going to glue that down with some glitter glue. Get it in place. Take my baby wipe and wipe off any excess. And there the spine is now done. And I will be putting the fold over piece. I will be doing the same thing. I will be utilizing that pinstripe cardstock to create that fold over. Originally, I had covered this foldover with that parchment painted paper, and now I've decided that I think I would like that foldover to just be black. So I am covering it completely with this pinstripe cardstock and just measuring the edge of the book to determine how wide I want that from a signature standpoint so that it folds over and, and covers the edge of those signatures. To make sure my edges are not um, sticking out with that parchment color, I 
took some black paint and just went around the outside edge and the, covered the inside or the flap portion. And I just want that black backdrop there. And now I am going to utilize one more leaf And once again, I have put it on some black cardstock. And I'm determining the placement on this fold over. So I'm going to dry off that paint, pulled out the heat gun to kind of speed that drying process up a bit. That, I think, is going to look nice. And then we'll continue with that leaf there to kind of make that pattern of those leaves still be there when you close the book. And then when you open the book, you have that skeleton leaf at the bottom. So let's glue this into place. Just touching up a bit with the black paint on the edge. And I decided to add some pattern paper along that inside, so I pulled out a sewing pattern, and I am covering the inside of this foldover with that sewing pattern. And this project I made for a video hop and the theme of that was patterns at play. So I used the seamless pattern for the front cover and then pulled in the sewing pattern for the inside of the back flap. I have the pinstripe pattern on the edges. And of course the, the leaves, that pattern is not broken when you open or fold the book, open or close the book. And this kind of disguises that magnet a little bit as well. We're pretty close to finished. We have the fold over flap put into place. The magnetic closure is working. And now we have the inside front and the inside back that I think I would like to add a pocket and a belly band to. And I have left over this black cardstock that I have pinstriped with the scoreboard. Just going to mark the spot that defines the edge, stick that into my Fisker, and just cut from edge to edge, lining up that mark, which creates that nice triangular pocket that I can lay right here in the front cover. I think I'll put a little um, thumb indention there, what I call a little thumb hole. I'm going to pull out a circle, something circular, and, and mark that so I can cut that out. I just have a lid that I'm going to draw with my white jelly pin around to create a line so I can easily cut along that line. And there. Now we'll just glue that along the edges into place. And I'm using the glitter glue. And that holds that pocket down nicely. And for the back, I'm going to do the same with the, just going to cut a belly band out and just glue top and bottom.
And that completes the book. It is finished. And I actually did two books the same way. I just decorated the front and back differently. But I don't think we need to go through all of that again. So here is the two. And you can see the top left is the one I just finished, a little close-up of the leaves there. The close-up of the pinstripe on the spine, the book open, the back cover, and I did come back and, and splatter the gold ink on that. And there are the two finished pieces. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you will stay with me by subscribing. And I have a playlist of journals that I have made here on the end screen. And I hope you will you know, take a look at some of the other pieces I've made. Thank you so much for being here. I shall say bye for now.